Oh, hello, my name is Anna Nimura of BGX Capital and we are at Adcon Conference and right now we are speaking with Dimitri Buteri. Welcome. Hi Anna. Happy to have you here at the conference. Thank you. So what is your interest in the conference that you are here? Oh. We know you are in the blockchain, cryptocurrencies, yeah. we yeah. know about it, but specifically yeah. well, I mean, topic. Adcon is actually one of two key conferences for Ethereum every year, right? So that's kind of one big reason. And it's right in Toronto. I'm in Toronto and, you know, I'm Vitalik's dad and kind of for me to see him and connect with the community. There are so many reasons, right? Where do we even start? So you're saying that this platform is actually very good to connect people who are very much interested in the topic. Yeah, yeah. Adcon is one of the best conferences yes. for people working on the Ethereum platform. I've noticed that there is a lot of uh, speaking it's a very um, technical talk. Some of them are, not all of them, actually. I think that they do a decent job alternating between some very technical stuff and some high-level conceptual stuff. Yes. Well, uh, there was a lot of talking right now, and yesterday, actually, your son Vitalik participated in one of the very um, full of energy discussions about scalability. Yes. And that seems to me that it's becoming an issue, and a lot of people are talking about this. So what do you think about it? Yeah, I mean, that's the key issue now, because really, right now, it's uh, this technology is a toy. It's cool, it has a big promise, but until that's solved, you know, people are not going to be able to do anything on this. So it's really like uh, every technology st starts out like this. Oh, that's a little pilot way playing with that. So Ethereum is at the stage when it's clear that there is a huge potential, but people have to solve those scalability problems. And that's kind of. But I'm very confident that uh, all these bright minds working on this stuff are uh, very excited about the progress I have seen in the last year. I've noticed, I was actually very surprised yesterday. There was like new kids in the block and they run the world that's yeah. what I can see it right so are we really far away from like finding really a solution to the scalability is it like truly something that people need to in in that ecosystem they need to really work upon I'll give you a long answer and uh, for context I think there are three top three big issues for people to solve for this whole promise of blockchain to realize. One is scalability, one is user experience, how easy it is for people to use this stuff, and the third one is actually for people who are building stuff on top of the platform to actually focus on consumers, to deliver things they want to do versus building some cool technological toys. So with scalability, I'm actually thinking that we've made a lot more progress than I have expected in the last 12 months. So yes, a lot of this stuff is coming online, like pilots, so many people have been involved, the team is much bigger, they are all kinds of initiatives so yes and, you know I think that I would expect in this year to a lot of progress to be made I think next year will probably will be the stage when it's like oh yeah okay scalability we can keep moving this but it'll stop being like number one issue what I can see right now um, blockchain um, cryptocurrencies maybe less but blockchain it's very reserved to professional people do you think that eventually as you mentioned users user experience yeah. that is going to achieve the level that regular people can use it the same way as they using computers they don't know how to build the computers but they know how yeah. to operate the computers even with cryptocurrencies right I think like in you know, a tiny percentage of people actually have an idea what it is and if you even look at the applications that are used to like wallets to store your yes. currency, most of them are unusable. I cannot give it to my mom and tell, hey, mom, you use this app. It's like, it's way too hard. It's way too flaky, you know, full of problems. So it, it'll get there, you know, the cryptocurrency as well as the blockchain technologies. So blockchain is just a generic name for their underlying technology, but then people have to build apps on top of this. So I think the next few years, people will stop talking about blockchain. It'll be like, okay, it's like plumbing underneath of this but it's really like okay i want to trade some digital games so I'll play digital games or trade some digital cats whatever i want to do and people will not think oh there's blockchain behind this like who cares about blockchain Yes, so it's, it's going to be just like a part of our life without yeah, exactly. our just thinking like internet, about it. Right? Yes. People used to talk about exactly. oh, information super highway, how yes. exciting, but yeah. now, oh yeah, internet, whatever, but now Facebook and Twitter. One more question for you, and I wanted actually to ask uh, something about your son. Uh, at some point, he mentioned that you encouraged him to build the games. So did you two find that he wanted to play the games and you wanted him to build the games? No, it's not like that. It's like uh, I'm a computer geek myself. I was very excited as he was growing up. How can I give you more opportunities to uh, 
or can play with computers. The producer that I did not have in my life when I was growing up in the Soviet Union. And we were looking for different opportunities and then we found uh, some uh, uh, courses for kids. They were teaching kids programming uh, by building computer games, which makes all the sense because like the way I was taught computer science, like very dry like lectures of this. And, uh, this way it was uh, much more accessible and much more exciting for him. He was quite engaged. Well, yeah, I can build this little game. I mean, in the meantime, he was still yeah. playing a lot of games. Okay. And yes, we had some discussion about that. But at the end of the day, I was not able to give him a good reason why he should stop playing mm -hmm. that game. World of Warcraft was kind of one of his favorites. Yes. Because he was an awesome student, you know, making progress and many other areas of his life. Like, yeah, if, if, if he wants to get up very early, play sometime, like, it's his call. He needed to have a little bit of the downtown. Down, yeah. Downtime, yeah. yes, for himself, yes. Mm -hmm. So practically, in a way, for your son, he started to learn more through through games, through building the games. So it was education, one of the ways, yes. So one using of the like a in general, gaming education, just in, to in general, get I think that the education the, system sucks in a way that it kind of most people when they go into the formal education system, they they think that education sucks. It's boring. It does yes. have to be. I think Sometimes that it is well, dry. well designed education. Uh, has to be fun, right? I think people, when they drop the right way, it's fun. They want to keep going with it, keep learning, and you know, so that was kind of one of the and ways. And it fulfills their curiosity as well. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Well, fantastic. Thank you so much, Dmitry, for being here and for being with us at EdCon conference and giving us this wonderful interview. Sure. Thank you so much. Thank Enjoy you, the rest of the conference. Thank Bye, you. Guys. Thanks.